What's up, guys? We are back for um, part two in this series of uh, how to use Cockatrice, and this is building a deck and then getting comfortable with um, how Cockatrice works before you're actually in the game. Um, everything about getting the deck built, everything about you know how the UI works, everything like that. So, um, if the, okay, let's close Cockatrice, actually. Oh, look, all this recording. Ah, no, don't look, don't look. Okay. I hope we didn't see any of that. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so we're back here. So let's say we want to build a deck. So we open up Cockatrice. We go to Cockatrice, and then Deck Editor. This is how this whole thing starts. Um, now, you might want to know where to find decks if you are looking to, let's say, play some of the best decks, some of the decks that pros play. Now, you could build your own deck as well. Let's say you wanted to build some sort of a mono green deck. Um, you can see the first thing you do, you deck name right over here. You just type in a deck, um, mono green. And let's say you just want to start building a deck, you want some land of war elves, so you start typing like this. And there it is, there's four land of war elves. Got them. I'm hitting enter, and that adds it to my main deck. I can hit control A on the Mac, it's command A, delete. Um, and let's add, this probably want two birds of paradise. One, two, there they are. Control A, let's make sure we get four green sun zenith. There they are. So you see I'm not typing the full word here, I'm just typing as much as I need. One, two, three, four. Um, and let's say I want Strangle Root Geist. Strangle Root Geist. There he is. One, two, three, four. Oh, I hit five. Right? Whoops. My bad. Hit five. So you can see over here on my list, I have 15 main deck. I have five Strangle Root Geist. I only want four. So there's two ways I can get rid of this. The first way is go down here. De decrement? Decrement? Increment is a word. I don't know. Decrease, I think, is the word. It doesn't matter. Um, I... I can make sure String Group Guys is highlighted. Click Decrement or Decrease Number. Um, now I can increment, right, to go up one. Another way to do it is on my keyboard, I can just hit the, the minus button, which is right next to zero um, on the top row of the keyboard. Hit minus. Now I can also hit shift and then plus, and it goes up. So you can see plus, 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 minus, minus, oh, and then minus, minus, minus. And that's another way to do it. Now if I just want to get rid of that whole card, um, I can hit minus four times. That will get rid of it. Let's put it back. Another way of doing this, I think I can just hit delete on my keyboard. I hit delete. That took rid of it. I mean, that got rid of it. Another way of doing it is to make sure it's highlighted and hit remove row. And that takes that that gets rid of it as well. So here we have our creatures. Let's make sure we add some lands. We probably want a bunch of forest. I can just keep hitting like this. I don't know if there's a way to actually change this. Yeah, so there's not a way to add a specific number here. So you just kind of kind of smack enter a bunch of times. Um, and yeah, that's the basics of building a deck. When you're done, you can hit deck, save. You can hit save deck as or save deck. It'll pull from the title here to be your deck's name. Mono green, I hit save, and it's in there. Now, let's close the deck editor. Let's reopen it. I can open this deck. Whoa. What's going on? Holy cow. Calm down, program. So I can either hit Control O for open, or I could do deck, and I can say load deck. Here's my mono green deck. And look, it's just like it was before. So it saves it. Now from here, let's say I want to add some Garuks or some Garricks. So I add those. I can say Control S, and I can just save it. So it's just like you're typing a document, like in Word or something like that. Control S, save. Um... And we're just going to, we can do something like that. Now let's say instead, instead of doing the mono green, let's say we want to build a new deck. We can say deck new or control N. On, on the Mac, of course, you Mac users probably better know this. Everything for the control keys is just command instead. So let's do new deck. Um, and let's make a new deck. Let's say that I want to play John Finkel. John Finkel's deck. I want to play his blue, white, and a little bit of black spirits deck that he, um, that he took fourth place with, or third place, anyway, that he top aided the uh, Pro Tour with. Third place, I guess. So what I can do, I want to go find this deck, the easiest place to go, I can go to Opera, you know, to the internet, um, and I can go to StarCityGames.com. Um, StarCityGames.com is, there's a lot, there's other places you can go to, you can go straight to MagicTheGathering.com or Wizards.com. I like Star City because I can go here for Standard and Legacy deck lists right there. And, oh, it's not there. Is it really not there? That's embarrassing. Okay, change my mind. So instead, I'm just going to Google uh, Pro Tour Honolulu 
2012 coverage. Normally, I'm used to seeing the deck lists all be right here. So you can see here's GP Orlando, 2011 Worlds. Maybe she's not up yet. Undefeated FNM deck list from Star City. Basically, all the deck lists, all the Star City Open winners, um, the GP winners, Worlds. Normally, the Pro Tour I, it should be here. I guess it might not be, though. Whatever. So I just Googled it. Pro Tour Honolulu 2012 coverage. And here we have, let's see, we want deck lists. Top 8 deck standard. So here's John Finkel's deck. So all I'm going to do is I can just look at this deck here on the mothership. I can look here and I can just start typing. Dark Slick Shores. There's four of those. Evolving Wilds. One, two. Glacial Fortress. One, two, three. Island. One, three, four, five. So you can see I'm just, I'm just building this deck. When I'm done, Control S to save this deck. It asks me what to name it. I say John Finkel, Blue, White, Black Spirits. Save. That's all it is. That's all it takes to build a deck. Uh, it's really, really easy. Now, I showed you guys before. I'm going to open up a new deck. Now, here's how my organization works, because I am going to close this. I love building decks. I love uh, borrowing deck ideas from, like, Star City Games articles, Channel Fireball articles, 60cars.com, Man Deprived, and especially the Mothership for Pro Tours. So what I do is whenever I see a deck that, I, that I'm at least a little bit interested in, um, I open up my deck editor, and I copy it in. So if we go to Standard, and also... I have my Twin Blade deck, which I love. So let's go into Standard. So here I've got everything organized by the last name of the creator of the deck. Um, so you see I have a couple of Patrick Shapin decks here. I've got a couple of Jerry, I guess not all last name, Jerry T decks. I've got a couple of uh, Mike Flores decks, uh, Patrick Neiman, me, that's Ontiveros, that's my last name, Paula Vito, Domino Rosa, I've got a Colony, the Colony Woods deck. I've also got the Pro Tour Dark, Dark Ascension Top 8 decks right here. Some of them played the same deck, so I don't have all eight of them because, uh, yeah, I've looked PV and Kibler. Um, two people played this blue white deck, or the blue white black deck. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's how I have mine organized. And that way I know exactly what I'm looking for, um, when I, as far as decks go. So I can go into modern, same thing. I've got a bunch of Reed Duke decks. Uh, I've got a couple of Jerry T decks, a couple of Flores decks as well. These are some decks that I pulled from some PTQ winners from online. Anyway, I hope it makes sense. I just have a bunch of decks in here. It's just a bunch of fun. These are also just, um, these you can email, um, these decks, or you can Skype them, or, you know, send them whatever, send them on your flash drive. So, like, for example, if I have a buddy and I want him to play, I want to, I want to run my deck against the gauntlet, I can send him just five or six decks, just email these lists, and he can just put them in his deck's area, and he can load them up. Uh, I hope that made sense. So let's let's say now that we are ready to start looking at the actual program of cockatrice because as as of right now we haven't actually gotten in there yet. <laughs> That's what she said, right? So cockatrice connect. Now here, under player name, we're going to type in our registered name and our password. Now you don't have to do this. You could type in just a whatever name, um, but it's better to type in your registered name and password because then it logs us in. And this is the main. This is the main here. So you can join this room, the MTG room. I've only ever seen one room up here. I guess potentially they could start adding more Yu-Gi-Oh! and Star Wars and WoW TTG they wanted to. But I've only ever seen this one. And it's actually already open, this room, right here for us. But let's wait now. Let's go on to user lists. So you can see I have some friends I've added on buddies right here. So I can see if any of them are online. Any users I've ignored, which are none so far. Um, over here is my little profile. Uh, I, I chose not to share my real name on Cockatrice. Uh, nah, whatever. Gender, I didn't change that because, whatever, I'm lazy. I'm from the United States. I am a registered user. Um, this is my little profile picture. And these are all the users that are currently online. So these are the registered users with the little green usernames. And then the non-registered users have these uh, little blue dudes next to their names. Um, next, deck storage. So here, you could potentially, like, if I wanted to have Twinblade available to my account, wherever I go on Cockatrice, I can just upload it. I click here on the deck. Then I clicked on the arrow and uploaded it right over here. Now the reason I don't use this, I I don't use this. I use um, Dropbox, Dropbox instead for my decks, is because if I then change this Twin Blade deck, I have to upload it again. I have to re-upload it over here, and I have to delete this old one. Otherwise, uh, you can have multiple decks up here, and you can forget to update it. So you could change it on your computer, and then you know go to play and load the server deck, and all of a sudden it's not the right deck, and you have the wrong thing up there. It's pretty annoying, so I prefer to just keep them all in my in my on um, locally. And, of course, this is the big room, Magic the Gathering room. You've probably all been here at least once or twice. This is where we have any games that are open are currently displayed. We can also show full games and games that are currently running. Um, and we have a big list here. Um, I like to always organize it by game type. 
and I like to open up this uh, this little uh, description pan panel here. Um, as far as these go, most of these, so you can see there's a password, yes. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. When we create a game, let's say I want to create a brand new game. So I'm going to click Create right here. First thing I do is I can put a description in. That's what will show up right here. So you can see some people are playing Highlander, some people are testing standard decks. So for example, what I could put, if I was a brand new user, I could type Type 2 for standard. And then I could put New User. So people know that I'm new. So if they don't have the patience or they just want a quick game, maybe they won't join. If I want to play against tier 1 decks, I want to test a, a standard deck against the best decks in the format, I could put something like Serious Testing, or I could put Tier 1 decks, something kind of like that. If you want to make sure you get a best 2 out of 3, you can put 2 out of 3 with Sideboard, so that they know you want to sideboard. See, I'm just changing the name here, that way people know kind of what's going on in the description for what, they're, what they should expect when they join your game. You can change the number of players, so especially if you're playing like EDH, um, you can change the players. I don't, even, I don't know, is there a limit? I don't think so. I mean, there's probably a limit eventually. Um, you can change whether or not spectators are allowed so they can view the game. And um, if they need a password to join chat and so they can see everything. By default, spectators can see only the battlefield. They can't see either player's hand or deck or anything like that. But um, a lot of times when me and my buddies are playing, there'll be three or four of us. And so two of us will play and the others will join and they can, we'll let them see everything. See our hands and everything. Um, and then we just trust them not to tell the other person while we're testing. You can make a password for it, so only people that know the password can get into your game. So, for example, I'm going to cancel out of this. I'm going to try and join this person's game and ask for a password. If I don't have the right password, I'm going to put Fubsy. Nope, wrong password, so I can't get in. This way, you can make sure that if you create a game and you only want to test between you and your buddy, you just set a password up. Or you can say only buddies can join. Or both, if you really wanted to. And then you make sure you check mark a game type here. So what I normally do when I'm testing is I like to check mark standard, and then I like to say tier 2 serious testing with sideboard. This makes sure that I get a best 2 out of 3, that I'm not going to get somebody who's maybe playing a really random 5 color aggro deck or something kind of like that, that I'm going to get some serious games going on. Um, and I can really test my decks well. And when I say OK, which I'm not going to do now, I want to show that in another video, um, then I can start the game and we can get it rolling. So those are some of the basics. Um, oh, the last thing is you can join as a spectator. Let's do that actually. Let's join. Let's see. Let's find a, a run, a full and a running game. Uh, we have two out of two. Here's some legacy. Let's find a standard. So here's a standard. They are being played. They are playing serious competitors. Tiers two and three. Oh, tiers two out of three. So let's join this as a spectator. This is what a normal spectator can see. Um, now we're going to go over exactly how to play this in a little bit. But you can see, so it looks like the bottom player is playing Wolf Run, the top player is playing Blue Black Control. Um, as a spectator, in the way that he set it up, I cannot chat. I can't say anything to these players. You can see that we have uh, those two are playing, and I am spectating. Um, and yeah, so we're spectating this game right now. Um, I, can, I can spectate multiple games at once. So let's join as a spectator here. So you can see I have this game going, and I have this game going. I'm spectating them both. You can also play both games. Looks like he's playing a Ghoul Tree deck, and he's playing some sort of a one, two, three, four, four color ramp, Inferno Titan, and Lingering Souls deck. I'm not sure what's going on there, but that's okay. Um, and so yeah, so spectating is really fun if you're just kind of bored and want to watch people play, or especially if your buddies are playing, you can join as a spectator. So I'm going to close out of these two games here. And I can't think of anything else we need to cover right now. Uh, oh, there's also always a big chat down here, which you can talk about. Um, oh, oh yeah, I know what we can talk about. Let's talk about draft. Sometimes, let's see if there's one we're going right now. EDH22, no, let's, let's try, check like this. Game type, draft sealed. So there is a sealed going on. Oh, it's just two. Okay. So people sometimes draft on here. And there are a couple of different websites people use to draft. Here's how this works. So on Magic Online, normally, you draft on the program. You get your cards, and you play on the program. On Cockatrice, though, you can't actually draft on this program. <clears throat> what you have to do is use a website that will um, auto-create packs, and then will pass them around, and it simulates a draft. When you're done, you get your list, um, and then depending on who is running the draft, sometimes you have to take a screenshot of your list and send it to them, or other times it's just you know just they're just trusting you because cheating in draft on something like this is really lame. Um, and then <clears throat> you take your decks over to here. They have a draft. You load them in, and you go. Um, and, yeah, so let's see if we can get a multiplayer EDH game. 
Um, I don't think they're... Oh, yeah, so here's a three-player EDH game, just so you can kind of see what that looks like. So this is uh, one player, another player, another player. You can get a bunch of players doing this all at once. Um, and it gets pretty intense sometimes. And that's about it for exactly how to pl how, you know how to set up all this kind of stuff. Um, the last thing, the last video we're going to go over is etiquette while actually playing the game. Um, so let's get this one wrapped up, and hopefully we'll see you in part three.